Hi, Andrea. Hi, Bram. Nice to have you here. Thank you. I'm so glad to be here. Super. You're a client success manager. You've been with Chile for a while. Yes. How's the journey been so far? It's been great. I joined the client success manager team uh, in October 2021 and uh, learned a lot from all of the different departments, working closely with the technical team and the client success engineers, um, learning more about our customers and how each team interacts within the company. And any highlights or things that you remember? Uh, getting together here, you know, everybody being in the same yeah. place at the same time has been a, a highlight definitely this year. And, uh, you know, the daily conversations we have continue to help us grow together, you know, even though we're all over the different parts of the United States and some yeah. of our counterparts here in uh, Europe and the UK. So it's it's been in, enjoyable to get together and and get to see everybody in person in addition to like our daily exchanges. Indeed, it's something different than having faces on a screen in a remote meeting. Yes, or, or those days where everybody's just like, we're going to do cameras off today. <laughs> <laughs> and I heard that a lot in the, in the, in the last week we had our kickoff week. Um, I heard that a lot from people that meeting people in person and being able to exchange ideas, that is indeed very valuable. Yeah, you get to know a lot more about the person's backgrounds and interests yeah. and a lot of those commonalities that kind of cross the, you know, geographic lines. Yeah. And and before you were with Chile Publish, because this is relevant for the next part, you worked at a customer of Chile Publish? I did. Uh, I come from a print industry background uh, where a number of years ago we chose Chile as our online document editor for a number of clients who had yeah. some problems we were looking to solve. And did it solve the problems? Definitely. Okay, <laughs> Look, good to hear, <laughs> indeed. Um, today the conversation, that's why we, we asked you to be here, is, is, um, is about importing designs into Chile Graphics, uh, while well, we should say now Graphics Publisher, which is the the print application in Chile Graphics. Um, and it is about importing designs. Can you talk about, did, did that, uh, did it happen when you were a customer? Did you have, did you have the needs to import existing designs? Definitely. Um, in most cases, the problem we were trying to solve was brand adherence. So our clients had very strict branding guidelines. Uh, their design team put in the effort and the time and team's worth of work to build out these designs in InDesign. And therefore, when they needed to bring them into Chile for versioning, it was uh, an easier process to leave everything in the InDesign file as it is, use the plugin tool to package and upload a packaged file, and know that everything would be in place where it needed to be, so that when we needed to do the versioning, we already had a head start. And uh can you elaborate a bit on versioning? What is what was the versioning? What was the use case for the versioning in your case? Uh, in one case, we had a retailer who had stores all across America uh, and Canada. They were looking to put together trunk show event invitations. So we had uh, different stores responsible for putting in their own event information rather than having to get all the information back to headquarters for a design team to then have to do that repetitive action of versioning out uh, each store's specific event invitation. Mm -hmm. So we put the uh, process in the hands of the local stores. Uh, we you know, eliminated a few bottlenecks that would have happened if they had to go through headquarters. And then the uh, end users were the people in the actual location, planning the event, had the details, cut out that middleman of you know, getting the information back to somebody else, mm -hmm. and being able to create a number of varieties with one design. So when you look at it, imagine I'm a, I'm a designer at, at a print shop back then. My job was to create the file, create a design, and then importing the file. What, what, what was my task then back then to, uh, to get it in, or even it still is today? So to, to get the design in, um, it would be going to your InDesign file. Uh, if you had any elements that were fixed, can't be edited, can't be locked down, I would usually move them to a, a specific layer and make sure that layer was locked. And then make sure all of my fonts were properly 
visible to InDesign. Uh, and any images were accessible directly so that when the packaging started, you, the file could be created that would bring the specific layout positioning of the InDesign file, as well as all of those fonts and graphics uh, packaged and then an, an upload so that you can then open that file in Chile and look at you know what else needs to be modified or locked or made a variable for the user. So where that event date needs yeah. to be a variable, then it's just a matter of applying those actions or doing a little bit of variable uh, updating, and then the end user could interact with it very simply. So in that case, the, the, the use case was a self-service one where the, the local retailer could go in and, and open up the, the template in the Creative Automation platform yes. and make changes that were allowed by the template designer. Yep. Super. There's also the other use case. Did you have um, examples where you had a headless operation, meaning that a machine could trigger the, um, the template that is stored in Chile Graphics and then was triggered and the output was automatically generated? We did. Um, one that comes to mind was a university. They would provide a spreadsheet that included all of their uh, student admissions data. So we would get a file daily that included students' information, what degree they were accepted to, um, if they were conditionally accepted or if they were denied admission. Um, so it was very sensitive data. Yeah. We had a number of templates prepared for the different versions of the letters that would be sent. So not only we, were we using the data to make variable documents, we were choosing the correct document based on that data file, so using uh, Chile's API, we were able to take the data, select the right template, merge in the data to version out a file, and then uh, put together an admissions packet for each student that applied. But getting that file into the Creative Automation tool is the same process. You start as a design that you already had, so that you can the, the, the value there is you can reuse all the existing designs. But then it's up to the use case to decide, is it a self-service use case where somebody goes in and makes changes? Or it's a headless operation, machine to machine, where a machine triggers, give me the next batch of information using that template. Right. Yeah. So it, it was a, a very sensitive topic. You know, We didn't want a student to find out they were admitted only to find out later that there was a data error. So we also put in a proofing process. So when the data was being merged in, creating new documents, the resulting PDFs could be viewed by a member of the board at the university to review the data and make yeah. sure everything was correct before it went to print. It's good indeed, especially in this use case, it's, uh, it's good to have some control <laughs> in, in place. Indeed. So the added value, having that, that template that you already have, the, the existing designs creating as a template, what happened with the output? You're, you just talked about PDF. Any other output that, that was created in other use cases? Uh, well, back to that trunk show event for the retailer. Not only were we creating a PDF that could be printed or uh, even printed locally to be distributed, but there was a JPEG created of that file as well that the stores could then use to download and send as an email so not only were okay. they sending a print invitation, but an email invitation to their select VIP clients. They may have a contact list, um, and that would you know, make sure that it would go through. Yeah. No, great. Um, what was the impact Chile Publish had when you worked at the print shop? Overall, it was that um, scalability. You know, you're able to make a number of versions uh, based off of one template, one design, one set of rules mm -hmm. and one set of branding guidelines. So you had that scalability with consistency. Uh, so it, it made a lot of people's jobs easier because they knew they didn't have to check that, is this the right logo? Do we have the right colors? All of those different variations that can happen in a file when it goes from designer to approver to printer to you know, stores, that was being eliminated. It was all taken care of and, and that quality control, branding control was all there. Super, it's great to hear, and especially now to, to have you here also in the company. Yeah, I'm thrilled to be here. Yeah. Well, uh, maybe to summarize, the, um, what I learned is indeed the impact of being able to reuse designs that already were there, being able to import them into the Creative Automation tool, then being able to scale and make different versions, 
and output them to static digital and PDF versions. Definitely. Yeah. Well, thank you, Andrea, for being here. It was a, it was a pleasure to meet you here in our studio. Thank you so much for having me. Great Super. to be here. I hope to have you here in the next time and uh, hope that our listeners also uh, join us the next time. Sounds good. Thanks so much. Thank you. If you liked this episode and you want to get engaged or you have tips for improvements or changes, please let us know at pulse at chilipublish.com. Um, also, if you want to be informed of next episodes, please subscribe to the newsletter on the, the form below.